Welcome back to ACCA paper F9. Today we're going to talk about the financial management environment. Now this is a very short chapter in summarized form, but it encompasses uh, quite a broad uh, scope in the sense that um, we have to think about the broader context or the global context in which uh, businesses operate. It's, it's, a, it's plainly obvious to, to everybody that any business has to understand the economic uh, environment in which it is, um, it is acting. And therefore, it belongs to the uh, general uh, economic literacy of a, uh, of a business manager to be able to understand what uh, the actions in, in the economy mean for his or her business, particularly when we look at not only uh, statistics regarding uh, projected um, or expectations for market demand for one's goods and services in an economy. This is a free market economy, of course, where there are many actors making uh, decisions with regard to uh, the supply, production and uh, uh, purchase of um, goods and services. But we also have to understand how government uh, affects the uh, whole thing, because there is there is no truly free economy in this world. There are um, government interventions, uh, more or less, from one place to another. Now, the world has gone through a rather, or is going through, I should say, a rather uh, recessionary phase, at least in. Europe and the United States, where uh, a certain degree of uh, austerity has been practiced. The uh, other parts of the world, the, the emerging markets, have been growing, of course, for the last few years. One could say this is their chance to become more important players on the world stage. But even, even the Chinese economy has been slowing down uh, uh, in, in, in according to the last reports. So. As economies are going through a bit of a recovery phase, uh, it's important for businesses to understand what the, what the government actions are likely to be with regard to monetary policy. Now, monetary policy, this is the, uh, usually the central banks acting on influencing the level of interest rates in the economy. Uh, they may target, for example, exchange rates as well, and of course, they have uh, inflation uh, targets to to be obtained. Now, the question is, where are we in the business cycle? If, as I mentioned now, we would be in a kind of slow or incipient uh, recovery phase, and some people would, of course, uh, dispute that because some economies are beginning to show some growth and others are still uh, sinking, unfortunately, particularly those that are burdened by a heavy level of debt. The uh, government uh, policies are going to be influenced by the need to, um, to help stimulate um, economies and to resume some kind of growth and therefore be able to create jobs in the labor market. So labor policy is one thing to keep an eye on. Now, labor policy coupled with monetary policy, one speaks of quantitative easing. Quantitative easing is a way of increasing the money supply, providing more liquidity to the economy so that it can begin to grow. And this should have a stimulative effect. It hasn't always been the case. In the US, there's a raging debate between uh, Keynesians and monetarist eco uh, economists with regard to how effective uh, quantitative easing has been. And of course, there is also a constant uh, concern that uh, if the quantitative easing is, is, too, is, is pursued too far, that inflation can uh, go up. Inflation normally goes down in a recessionary phase because there's weak demand for goods and services and therefore prices are not going to uh, be pushed upwards as much as they would be in a recovery phase. Now, in the face of all this, fiscal policy adopt, uh, takes on more importance as well for governments, as particularly governments that are running significant deficits. 
So a government that has a deficit may be tempted as part of its fiscal policy to increase taxes, but of course increasing taxes may have a dragging effect on economic recovery. So you have certain advocates, uh, particularly on the, uh, among the right uh, political wing in the United States who advocate tax reductions in order to stimulate the economy, and this is their brand of fiscal policy. As I mentioned before, these uh, the economic theories and positions that stand behind the, uh, what, the, the kind of policies that are being advocated by different parties uh, to, in the economy and, and decision makers and influencers, um, they, they, are, they are varied and the debates are by no means uh, conclusive. So we're going to have to live with a, a, a fair amount of controversy and hopefully also uh, necessary experimentation to see what works in the best way in a given uh, in a given situation. We cannot say that one size or one remedy fits all situations. I think the world is diverse enough to to resist such a conclusion. So, bottom line on this is learn your macroeconomics. Read the financial newspapers. Um, Read uh, magazines that are dedicated to a discussion of business and economics and finance because this will put you in a good position with regard to uh, exam preparation. And finally, there's trade policy to consider and uh, the temptation by countries to protect their home industries by increasing protectionary barriers. Now, of course, uh, the World Trade Organization exists to reduce barriers to trade and to uh, lobby and to work on governments so that they do not um, reduce or roll back the gains that have been made in liberalizing trade because free trade is considered to have been a major uh, spur or, or stimulus to general economic growth um, in, in the world since World War II. Okay, another important area to focus on when we speak of the uh, environment, the general environment in which businesses and, and financial decisions are being taken is to understand the uh, role of financial markets and the institutions, primarily the banks. So here we're talking about financial markets, the money markets, which is the short-term um, borrowing and, and lending which takes place, and of course the capital markets, including the stock exchanges where uh, shares are traded as well as bonds. Um, it's critical to understand what recent history uh, has been since the uh, subprime crisis because we are still feeling the effects of this uh, financial crisis which began in 2008 and still has a number of knock-on effects uh, among uh, the uh, financial institutions and of course an impact on the general economy as well. And from the standpoint of regulation, and this is something which is important to mention, since all markets are being linked now through global integration, there is a greater move to coordinate uh, regulatory responses and to achieve some kind of uh, global or international regulatory mechanism which can do a better job than simply remaining at the individual national level of regulation. So this is also an extremely important area and one has only to look at recent um, uh, controversies to underline the importance of uh, financial markets and the regulatory uh, moves which are um, actively being uh, discussed. Why just recently um, one has in mind, and, the, and these things will have repercussions for, for the next uh, several years, the derivatives losses which have been incurred at J.P. Morgan Chase or the uh, LIBOR 
scandal which affects the, the LIBOR manipulation uh, affecting Barclays Bank, or even more recently now some investigations which have uh, been launched in alleged money laundering um, at HSBC. So very important and far-reaching uh, issues which any financial manager or we could say any uh, business manager in general should be aware of. And finally, one should uh, have a basic understanding of how stock markets operate. Uh, in the pre-technology uh, phase or in the days when uh, technology was, was not as advanced as it is now, um, a stock market was like any other kind of market, take a vegetable market or an, uh, almost an auction kind of uh, atmosphere where a lot of people get together physically and they associate with each other to buy and sell shares and some markets, uh, stock exchanges still operate in this way but others have made use of uh, technology to be able to uh, automatically be able to um, match uh, bids with offers by counterparties who are sitting remotely and connected by computer systems with an exchange. So the matching of bids and offers for a given share, a share can be done automatically in this way um, transactions come about and can be settled. So here we, we are looking at the traditional uh, purpose of a stock market hasn't changed. It allows companies to uh, raise capital and it allows people who already own shares to be able to sell them to other people in a secondary market. But the technology should serve the process of making stock markets um, both uh, more, more efficient and, and more effective in achieving uh, this capital raising um, effort by, by companies. So these two pages really contain kind of a microcosm of the whole world and be sure that you are familiar with these issues. Next time we're going to get, um, we're going to look uh, inside a typical business and deal with some uh, very uh, specific and practical financial management issues. Thank you.